Drew, good morning. Are you ready to experience Vision Pro for the first time? As I'll ever be. All right, Tim, you want to do the honors? Very much so. Introducing the world of spatial computing. Oh, wow. Tim, oh my gosh. This is so freaking heavy. Oh my god. Tim, are you kidding me right now? It didn't seem this heavy in all the pictures. Yeah, it, it takes a little getting used to, but uh, thanks to the Apple Store app and the True Depth camera system, we could accurately measure your film. Oh god, Tim, there's another strap in the box, right? Get the other strap. Oh my god, I'm getting a headache. This is so migraine inducing. I haven't even finished the setup process yet. Okay, you know what, Tim? I think if I lean my head back like this, I can get a little used don't, to it. Don't hurt yourself yet. You've uh, tried this on before, haven't you, Tim? I've never seen a picture of you actually wearing this. Oh, yes. I wear it every night. I promise. Well, what happened to that sky mode feature where you look at your ceiling and it feels like you're outside touching grass? Well, that's just for another day. Enjoy! Tim, what's the return policy on one of these? He's gone, isn't he? He, he left the room. My foot... So the pre-orders have gone up. In case you missed it, yes, I reserved mine for launch day. I'll be picking one up next week. I'm very excited to try it out so that I can see what all the hype is about. Is it overrated? Is it underrated? Is this thing as immersive as everybody's saying it's going to be? But in the process of launching pre-orders, we also got tech specs officially public from the website that kind of answered a lot of our suspicions surrounding Apple Vision Pro. A lot more so than previous Apple products where the tech specs usually drop at the same time as the product is on unveiled, Apple's been very quiet about it. But we've noticed that everybody from the media who's gotten a chance to check out Vision Pro keeps kind of bringing up the weight thing, that they just can't quite get comfortable with it. And the Vision Pro tech specs page reveal why this might be a very real concern that honestly is getting me a little bit more nervous every single day we get closer, because it reveals the weight of the headset, not counting the battery pack, by the way, being in the ballpark of 22 ounces, which makes it almost the same weight as a 12 point nine inch iPad Pro. That's uh, not a particularly light object to have sitting on your face all day. And yes, there have been heavier mixed reality headsets in the past, but as many others have already brought up, those typically have different weight distribution. So they put some of the weight on the back and some of the weight a bit more oriented on your forehead, like the HoloLens. Whereas with Apple Vision Pro, all of that weight is basically right at the front, which can make it feel a lot more heavier than it is. And the straps are basically mounting this tiny miniaturized supercomputer to your face just by pushing against your eyes and nose and everything over here. And usually Apple's pretty good with, you know, fabrics and cushioning material. So I'm hoping that they've thought about this, but it seems like it's a rapid concern that everybody who's tried it out keeps bringing up, even though they've only gotten to use it for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's going to be a whole different story once we have some people that start wearing this thing for hours and hours a day, like myself, who plan on testing that all day battery life when plugged in. I'm talking like irrelevant of the two or two and a half hour battery. What's this thing going to feel like if I'm wearing it for three, four plus hours? Probably depressing, but I'm gonna find out. Also through the tech specs, they revealed, in my opinion, somewhat reasonable storage configurations. So there's a 512 gig and a one terabyte, and they pretty much match the exact same pricing structure of any old Mac. It's just $200 more in order to get twice the storage and $400 more to get four times the storage. I'm not exactly exactly sure how much storage these things are going to need. You know, spatial video recording on Vision Pro doesn't really take up all that much space because currently spatial recording, at least on the iPhone, I assume it's the same for Vision Pro, should be capped at 1080p 30 frames a second, which is about 130 megabytes per minute, much, much smaller than the 4K at 60 that our iPhones can do. But some people might want to store full length feature films in Dolby Atmos with 3D support and all that. And that could easily be, I don't know, 60 plus plus gigabytes, so if you want to store all of those locally for your flights, I guess it's nice that we have the option for the higher storage configurations. We also know that against my predictions, they're not using the binned M2 chip. It is the variant of the M2 with all of the GPU cores and performance cores unlocked, which is funny because we're all still wondering why go with the M2 and not the M3. Probably because this has been in development for a while and that was just kind of the architecture it was built on, but still feels kind of weird to be spending $3,500 on the M2 chip, which 
came out two years ago now. And collectively, the system has 16 gigs of unified memory, which because it's mainly running like iPad apps, I don't really think that's going to end up being a huge problem, but I do think a lot of that RAM is probably going to be designated towards the R1 chip, which is mainly just focusing on stitching all of your camera feeds together to make the most immersive pass-through experience possible. We also thankfully got confirmation through the tech specs page about the refresh rates, which for some reason, tons of people online, specifically on Twitter, were all convinced the Vision Pro had a 60 hertz display. I don't know where that rumor came from. I think everybody just got obsessed with the iPhone 15 talk and assumed the Vision Pro was 60 hertz, but Apple's website now confirms it's 90 hertz up to 100 hertz, and basically they will variate the refresh rate of the displays based on the lighting condition of the room. So certain lights have different refresh frequencies, and if it's a certain one that feels out of sync with 90 hertz, then the displays can rev up to 100 hertz, and that's probably going to feel the most immersive as well, but I don't think there's going to be much control over it. It's probably just going to be dynamically shifting based on whatever lighting environment you're in. And while there's a bunch of cameras on Vision Pro, they didn't talk too much in the tech specs about what the specs are for each individual camera. They pretty much just gave us one spec, which is it's an 18 millimeter lens with a 2.0 aperture, which honestly, compared to the iPhones, is not that particularly low. So I'm sure that everybody who's gotten a chance to try out Vision Pro has always been using it in very well lit situations. But what I'm now very curious about is how does Vision Pro perform in very dark situations? I don't mean to freak anybody out, but there's definitely some times when we feel like using our phones late at night and there's not particularly a lot of light out. And Vision Pro kind of needs those cameras to be working in order for you to properly operate it. You know, the whole process of tapping your fingers together and moving things around, that's going to be based on vision. Those downward facing cameras on the headset are going to be looking for your fingers. So if it's really dark and they can't really get a good read on what your fingers are doing, then it might be pretty hard to use in a dark room. No one's actually been able to test that yet. So we'll find out that's something I want to try as soon as I get this thing. And then the most interesting factoid that I found through the tech specs is the included power adapter. So yes, that's one advantage of Vision Pro compared to an iPhone. It still ships with a charge brick and this one's only 30 watts, which honestly kind of impressed me and confused me a little bit because I knew that battery life was going to be the main issue with Vision Pro, only getting two hours with the battery bank, maybe two and a half hours if you're watching a 2D movie. And from the beginning, I was thinking, oh man, only a two hour battery life, but considering there's an M2 chip, an R1 chip, and all of these cameras and LiDAR, you know, anytime you use the LiDAR sensor on your iPhone, like if you've ever done an AR demo where you load something into your real space, using those cameras is one of the most power consuming things you can do on your iPhone. And there's a ton of them on Vision Pro. So I figured this was going to have a very, very high power consumption rating. But Apple's website is claiming that with that 30 watt charge brick, you can not only power the Apple Vision Pro, but also be charging the battery simultaneously, which means that the average power consumption of Vision Pro has to be below 30 watts. We still don't know exactly how low, but that is kind of an important decision and also an important fact that we have to figure out because some people, such as myself, are interested in the idea of using Vision Pro with our laptops a lot of the time. And our MacBook Pros can only really output about 20 watts from the USB-C ports on the side. So Vision Pro consumes more than 20 watts when just, you know, basically working and doing everything normally, then that's not going to be enough for a Mac to actually power it. Like you're always going to have to use that Apple special $200 Vision Pro battery. Thankfully, it is included in the purchase. But if you want your battery life to last longer than two hours, then you're going to have to find a third party power bank and make sure that that power bank can output at least 30 watts. But then theoretically, yes, if you're willing to carry around two separate batteries, maybe one in each pocket, then you could theoretically expand the Vision Pro battery to be much longer than two hours, depending on how big the battery bank is you're traveling with. Maybe you need a backpack with a freaking like car battery in the back, Iron Man style. But it really more than anything made me more disappointed by the pricing of the accessories. Like, yeah, I knew there was going to be a travel case that was like $200. Like, of course, that's outrageous and ridiculous, but you're not required to buy that. I'm sure there will be third party cases. But with the Vision Pro battery itself, it's still $200 if you want another one. And if that only supports a headset, which is probably consuming about 25 watts most of the time for two hours, that means we're talking about like a 50 watt hour battery. That roughly translates, it's not exact, but that roughly translates to about 13,000 milliamp hours, which means the Vision Pro battery capacity is really not that big, especially compared 
compared to all kinds of different third-party battery bank options out there. And according to Apple, at least, the cable that goes to that little proprietary barrel connection on the Vision Pro headset, the other end of that cable is still USB-C, but the Vision Pro battery is still required to get the headset working. And it appears, at least, that the USB-C cable in that battery is got some kind of aluminum circular pad on it. And there's nowhere we can tell Apple's selling some different, you know, woven cable that attaches to Vision Pro on one end, but then just has a normal USB-C port on the other end. That way you wouldn't have to carry around that, like, $200 aluminum specialized Apple Vision Pro battery. Why can't we just use any old battery? Because there's definitely power banks out there that go up to, you know, 30,000, 40,000, maybe 50,000 milliamp hours, and that could hypothetically extend your battery life easily to three, four, or five hours, depending on how big a battery bank you're willing to go with. And I hope that it's possible to use those accessories with Vision Pro, but we're not going to know until they actually start delivering these things to people who are not on an embargo list, because obviously we're probably going to get some exclusive, like, early access Vision Pro reviews within the next couple weeks, but all of those channels are going to have to stick to a script because they sign a contract, and Apple's going to be watching them very closely, making sure they don't say anything Apple doesn't want them to say. But hopefully this Groundhog Day, when Vision Pro launches, we can find out all of its true limitations and figure out what the actual power consumption rating is. Can you power it purely off of a USB-C port on a MacBook? Can you plug that USB-C port into other power banks? Or do you have to carry around two separate power banks everywhere you go? A lot of interesting things we're all going to discover within the next couple weeks. And it's an exciting time because it's not every day that Apple enters a brand new product category. But I can't wait to try it out. What other tech specs jumped out at you guys looking through the updated website links? Feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. This is your Alp Shapiro, and I will see you all in the next one.